Hello, welcome to an educational moment. I'm your host, Dr. Pat Dingle. Tonight, or today, depending upon when you're looking at this program, we have a wonderful guest for you. The guest tonight is none other than Professor Kathy Jones. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Pat. It's a pleasure to be here with you. It's a pleasure to have you, Kathy. Now, I want to give you a little bit of information on Kathy. She doesn't know that I know all of this stuff about her. But of course, you know, in an educational moment, we use our research skills. <laughs> Kathy, in addition to being a college professor at San Diego State University, is also a wonderful writer. Her first books, as she uh, describes them, were academic ones. And the titles of some of her books are Compassionate Authority, Democracy, and the representation of women. Is that right, Kathy? You're right, Pat. Another one of her works is entitled The Political Interests of Gender and Also Women Transforming Politics. I, of course, I was just very excited and just inquisitive about the titles of the works that she has, her first works. Hmm. She was trained at uh, the City University of New York's CUNY. Is that correct pronunciation? Yes. CUNY. Uh, uh, and also, she um, has taught at a number of universities. She first taught at the University of Louisville. Then she taught at the University of North Carolina, Wilmington. And her present position, she has really made an impact at San Diego State University. She has been there for 23 years. So I'm sure, having worked with Kathy, I know that she has left an indelible mark on San Diego State University. Kathy, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? OK. Well, I've been teaching for a long time. As you say, Pat, I started out at Louisville and then North Carolina. And I had a career of about 30 years of university teaching, mostly in the subject of politics, political theory, women's political movements. I have enjoyed also other interests in the area of not only writing academic works, but I've written two plays, one of which was produced a Wonderful. few years ago on the short stories of Grace Paley. And I'm very much interested in the integration of creativity and political imagination. Fantastic. See, that's what a creative, innovative person does. They integrate and collaborate with others to make wonderful things happen. And I know that's what you do. Thank you. You're welcome. I wanted, of course, to make sure that I didn't miss anything tonight. So I, I made really copious notes because I know how you and I like to talk. <laughs> You're absolutely <laughs> right about that, Pat. <laughs> My experience with Kathy started at the uh, NEH Summer Seminar for Teachers at Bard College. It was a seminar on Hannah Arendt. And of course, I will allow you, I will allow Kathy to tell you a little more about uh, Hannah Arendt a little later. But during the seminar, uh, Kathy served as the director. Uh, and of course, this is a seminar sponsored by the National Endowment for the Humanities. And at the seminar, there were 16 other people, well, let's say 15, 16 including myself, 16 visiting scholars who had the pleasure of meeting with Kathy every day. That's right. And she's a dynamo. She never is um, humdrum. She's <laughs> always go, 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 go. So she's really an energetic personality. 
And I can't say that about everybody, but I know Kathy is. Um, and of course, we had discussions at the seminar, and of course, we studied. Uh, there were there was homework, <laughs> homework, plenty of homework, plenty of reading. But of course, what I want to do right at this point, Kathy, is I want you to uh, tell the television audience what is the purpose of the summer seminars for teachers. Well, the National Endowment for the Humanities created these programs a number of decades ago. They really originated in the 1960s for college teachers, and then in the early 70s, the first programs were offered for school teachers in the K through 12 range of education. And they're intended primarily for professional development and intellectual stimulation, so that teachers can take the time that they have in the summer to renew themselves, to reinvigorate themselves in an environment with a community of colleagues directed by a university professor, but focused on any number of humanities uh, subjects. They range from studies of Shakespeare to understanding the history of the uh, Middle East to African American history that I know you're familiar with because you took the History Makers Institute uh, to a program like the one I run on the political theory of Hannah Arendt. And they're all a number of subjects in the humanities that people share as their common focus. And yet the teachers who come, come from all backgrounds in the United States, from all over the country and can be elementary teachers or middle school or high school teachers. They will be bringing their backgrounds in the social sciences or even the sciences and the humanities. But what they take in common is a focus on the subject of the seminar. And they spend anywhere from uh, two weeks to five weeks in the summer devoted to that single subject, and it's an extraordinarily exciting time, not only for the teachers who come, but for us who get to direct them, the professors uh, and the college teachers who are lucky to be able to have the time in the summer to spend with teachers like you, Pat. Thank you, Kathy. Kathy, I really appreciate you explaining in such detail what the summer seminars are about because this is an opportunity that every teacher can apply for and I try to share information also on the summer seminars for teachers but hopefully this program will um, inform others as well so that we will get more applications. I certainly hope so and the NEH has brochures that it sends out to all of the educational institutions in the United States. And I hope that when the counselors and the professors and the principals who receive these get the word out like you do, Pat, it's a fantastic opportunity for teachers at a time when, you know, teachers don't have as many resources as they used to. It's really important. It certainly is. And it's important for our global economy. Uh, we, of course, we know nationwide that um, the uh, educational level for the nation is not as high as it used to be. So, you know, this is a way to help our students to be more competitive and also to, as you stated, uh, help teachers become better informed and to offer really more challenging and more rigorous uh, exactly. curriculum. You're exactly right. Thanks. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, the seminar that you direct is entitled The Political Theory of Hannah Arendt, The Problem of Evil and the Origins of Totalitarianism. We have the opportunity to study in a beautiful location. It used to be called the Mary McCarthy House. That's right. But now it's called the Center for Politics and the Humanities the Hannah Arendt Center for Politics and the Humanities, and we're going to show an image of the center right now. In this location, we had so many beautiful conversations and lectures with you, Kathy, and as you uh, alluded to earlier, people from all over the country come. And so we become, we become friends with people in Alabama and Georgia, and, and we also often keep up an ongoing friendship. That's right. Once we leave the center. 
And I'm excited to hear from the teachers uh, on a continuing basis to learn about the curriculum that they develop, the ideas that they continue to share with each other, and studying for those weeks in the Hudson Valley is, as you say, a beautiful opportunity to just concentrate, to have the time to really renew yourself and to stimulate yourself, and as you also said, bring it back to your students. We learned today at the director's meeting in Washington, which I attended this morning, that thousands of teachers have attended these programs over the decades that they've been running, and they've gone on to influence thousands and thousands of their students so it's really a rich resource that we certainly hope educators become aware of and apply for. Uh, wonderful opportunity, great way to spend your summer. Yes, and on that note, Kathy, I'm actually planning to do a lecture discussion for our community, the Bowie community and the surrounding community, communities in March of 2012, so I'm hoping that our television audience will take advantage of the lecture discussion when it's available in March during the Women's History Month. Now, I wanted to talk to you about your seminar, mm -hmm. The Political Theory of Hannah Arendt, The Problem of Evil and the Origins of Totalitarianism. Uh, Kathy, what do you wish to accomplish when you share the information that you share on Hannah Arendt? Well, Hannah Arendt was a 20th century political theorist. She didn't call herself a philosopher. She insisted on the fact that she was a political theorist because she wanted to encourage people to think what they are doing. Now, those were her words. She lived in a tumultuous time of war, and uh, displacement, a time of millions of refugees and people suffering, millions of people slaughtered. And she was troubled by that experience and wanted to uh, write in order that these things would be known and that they wouldn't happen again. And in the seminar, I bring together a group of teachers to study three key works of her writing. Eichmann in Jerusalem, which she wrote in uh, the 1960 after attending the trial of Adolf Eichmann. Yeah. The Origins of Totalitarianism, which is a book about the reasons why anti-Semitism and racism and imperialism were the strands that led European civilization in the period of World War II towards the disastrous road that it took. And The Human Condition, which is a work of philosophy that really asks us to think about what's our purpose in life. Uh, can we learn to live together with all of our richness and differences and build a community? And what I hope that teachers learn by exploring these texts in depth is why it's important to study history, uh, what it means to defend the idea of human rights, where these concepts came from, uh, how is it possible for ordinary people to do awful things to each other, and what can we do so that history doesn't repeat itself? And by exploring these really important questions around a set of common readings, we bring together people whose background is in literature, history, uh, geography, philosophy, and together create a learning community so that by diving deeply into this material, we learn how to ask these kinds of questions and to challenge our students to think what they're doing and the decisions that they, they have to confront on a daily basis and really to take responsibility in our lives for the ways that we act with and uh, through each other. Kathy, you make some really, really strong points for what you expect people to accomplish when they participate in the seminar. Personally, the issue of human rights really resonated with me. Social justice, learning and, and also advocating on behalf of others who have a less ability to verbalize you know, mm -hmm. their position, I think is very important to respect human beings. Exactly. And I think that it's um, very important to, to uh, understand the Holocaust 
and to understand um, what a great tragedy that was and how when we respect one another as human beings, we cannot do that to one another. Mm -hmm. So I certainly uh, applaud you for the advocacy and for the uh, job that you do of informing, you know, the visiting scholars about the Holocaust and the great contribution that Hannah Arendt has made in terms of making us think, mm -hmm. making us consider our actions, and also encouraging us to have the courage to be different and to stand up when somebody else is being downtrodden. So I applaud you. Thank you, Pat. And I think it's important to stress, too, the idea that we come together in this seminar with very different points of view. Yes. <laughs> and we engage in dialogue. And, uh, and that itself is really an embodiment of the kinds of topics that we're exploring. How is it that we can have these conversations across our differences? You know, and at the end of the day, sit down and have a meal together. And how that's relevant to our everyday life. Uh, not just the big questions that Hannah Arendt was dealing with, but just the way in which, as you say, we treat each other with dignity and, uh, and with respect. And the idea that Arendt talks about in Origins of the right to have rights. and What does that mean? And how is it, as a community, as a world community, we explore those issues? Even if it's about people who aren't necessarily the same as we are or live next door to us, how do we develop that sense of of concern and care. Yes, and I agree with you. We had some really, um, <laughs> how can I describe it? We had some, we didn't have knockdown down drag but we had some very, very strong discussions. And after the discussion, uh, we were informed. We informed each other mm -hmm. about our opinions and, and we learned to respect even more other people's opinions. And I think that there's strength in diversity. Yes. You know, that's a, a, um, a very, very um, probably overused phrase. But I really believe that. I think there's strength in diversity. I think that's a great advantage in having a discussion and listening to the different uh, views and without putting someone down mm -hmm. because his or her view differs and that just because someone differs in an opinion doesn't mean that we don't, we don't respect one another. No, and you remember, I know you do, when we had a conversation about the meaning of plurality, one of Arendt's concepts. And yes. if I can just quote her for a second, she sure. talks about the idea that we're all human, uh, yes. that is, we're the same, that is human, in a way that none of us is ever the same as anyone else who has lived, is living, or will ever live. Exactly. And I like that idea of we're the same, we're human, but none of us is the same as the other person. Exactly. And it is the uniqueness that you allude to right now that makes each person in our society so special mm -hmm. and that we as human beings need to um, celebrate the uniqueness of every human being and such that we can encourage them to be the best that he or she can be and realizing that even though that we are different, we're more alike than we are different. Mm -hmm. And how important is that is, uh, for educators to explore together in a seminar environment? Extremely important. And I hope that I have some of my students in the television audience who watch this program and begin to just grasp and grab hold of some of the ideas that we're discussing right now. This is very exciting to me. Kathy, I know that you're a college professor at San Diego State University. It's in California for anyone who didn't know. <laughs> uh, what training is required to become a college professor? Well, you have to have a doctorate 
which means that after your undergraduate education, you're going to apply to go to a, either a, right into a doctoral program for your PhD or your EDD. And you may decide to do that immediately, or you may decide to take a master's degree. That usually means past your bachelor's degree, you're going to do another two or three years of formal classroom work, and then however long it takes you to write your dissertation, <laughs> yes. which is like writing a book, as you know, Pat. And so on the average, it'll be between five and seven years beyond your bachelor's degree. And uh, during that time, you're doing quite a lot of independent study. You're doing a lot of seminar work. You're learning more than you ever thought you could about how to do research. You're working with your fellow students and your professors to develop your writing skills so that by the time you complete your, um, your research, you present a dissertation, which is in the form of a written document. Can be, well, my, just as an example, my dissertation was about 350 pages, wow. and then you defend that dissertation before a committee of your faculty, and they ask you all kinds of questions about it. And in addition to this, there'll be tests and exams, both written and oral, that you take. And then it's a question of finding a position at a university, whether here or outside of the United States, and really developing your, your, both your teaching and your research uh, skills. I was very fortunate to be able to have uh, the opportunity to have an advanced degree. In fact, I'm the first person in my family ever to go to college. Wonderful. So I want to encourage all of, or any of those students who think, oh, that sounds like it's too much. No, it isn't. You can do it. You work yes. hard enough, you can do it. And even if you are the first one in your family to get an advanced degree, to finish your college education, and don't let anybody ever tell you you can't achieve it. I was also lucky that I had the benefit of public education because, you know, my family didn't have very much money and we were able to, or I was able to go to school through the combination of some scholarships and, uh, and also the support that public education offers. So I applaud all of the educators out there, both at the K through 12 level and at the university level who are working in public institutions because they make a difference in so many lives. They certainly do. And then once you get your position, if you're lucky enough to get a teaching position, then you're going to continue to be teaching in the classroom, uh -huh. undergraduates, and sometimes graduate students as well. But that's not all you're doing. No, it's not. <laughs> you want to share some of, all, some of the other things and duties that you have? Because I am familiar. I bet you are, <laughs> yes. Well. You're definitely expected to continue your own research, both to stay up on your field, so to speak, so that mm -hmm. you're always bringing the latest research into the classroom for your students. Mm -hmm. But you also are expected to publish your own research and writing. And so there is an expectation in the university system that you are excellent in teaching, that you're excellent as a researcher and writer, and that you're also excellent as a colleague, meaning that you're helping the shaping of university life in your department or at a higher level, depends on how your, your college or university is organized. So you work with your colleagues on committees, for instance, to review a curriculum, or you might be on a committee that decides how to award certain fellowships. Uh, but you also remain professionally active in whatever your interdisciplinary field or disciplinary field is. So you'll attend conferences. Yes. You'll give <laughs> papers. You'll share. But it's it's not just a burden. I want to stress the importance of of being in a community, a learning community, sharing yes. your ideas with your colleagues and learning from them. Uh, and one of the things that I find so exciting about the seminars that I have directed now for the NEH is that I'm learning all the time. And even yes. though I've read this material for 30 years, I see it with fresh eyes every time mm -hmm. I approach it. And you're a lifelong learner that way. And I think that's really the job of a, of a professor is to stimulate lifelong learning and mm -hmm. to have it stimulated in yourself. Yes, I agree with you. And I know that during the seminar, uh, one of the um, really um, 
wonderful experiences I had was gleaning from every visiting scholar. Mm -hmm. Each of us had different strategies uh, that he or she used. And so I gained some new strategies as well as shared some of my own. Now, I know that uh, we're running out of time, but that's okay. That's why I wrote down my notes to make sure that I didn't forget anything. <laughs> um, what advice do you have for any potential college students? Well, my advice is to to make sure that you're aware that you are going to have to put in a lot of time in your studies. It's not going to come automatically. And, but, but get excited about your education. Um, and take the time that you're in college to push your boundaries, to explore something that you didn't think you were going to like, and take up a subject that you don't know anything about. Because college is the time when you get to really broaden your horizons, expand your mind. It can be incredibly exciting. And uh, also, talk to your professors. When they have office hours, go visit them. Ask them questions. Share your ideas with them. They, professors not only like to talk in the classroom <laughs> <laughs> or with each other, they mm -hmm. really like to engage with their students and to, to know that their students are as excited about the material as they are. And you'll learn a lot that way. All right. Well, we are about to wrap up for today. We covered a lot of information, uh, advice for potential scholars, and also what a college professor does. And of course, we talked about the National Endowment for Humanities the summer seminar for teachers and also the summer seminars for college professors. That's right. So um, I, I want to say, Kathy, this has been absolutely delightful. Thank you, Pat. I've enjoyed every minute of it. Thank you. And I hope to continue our communication absolutely. over the years. Thank you. This has been an educational moment. We have had a wonderful time today with our very special guest, Professor Kathy Jones of San Diego State University. I hope that you have learned a lot as well as enjoyed yourselves today. I hope to see you the next time that we have an educational moment. Have a great day or a great night.